Hi everybody, Father Bill here. I'm actually in the kitchen of the parish house and I was, it's actually Monday morning and I've been uh, doing some yard work, uh, pushing the lawnmower, it's a uh, push mower. That's totally green. It literally is green and it's all about, you know, arm power. Anyhow, so I'm, what I'm doing this morning is actually, I've been not only working on the lawn, but uh, here at the parish house, there's some fruit trees that uh, Father David had planted and I am not much of a, a gardener, and in fact, let's just be honest, I am no gardener whatsoever. But given that, and there are some fruit trees, uh, I noticed, of course, some of the apples have been falling off the tree in the front. So I thought maybe I'll preempt that and take some of them down and pull them off the, off the tree. I'd shake the tree a little bit and figure out what was, I think, ripe. It's hard to know because they're just all green. They don't turn red, That's hard, at least not yet. And then also looking at some other fruit. So here's the fruit that I, here's the... The fruit of my labor. There's some apples, and I don't know what kind they are. And you can tell me what those what kind of apples those are. And I don't know if the smaller ones are actually ripe or not. That looks like sort of, but it does have a little red. And who knows, right? And then the real challenge was the blueberries. I don't know if I can pick these up here. So these blueberries, uh, Father Dave planted, and I thought to myself, what am I going to do with all this fruit? Well. Uh, my sisters once came and they picked the blueberries and they, they loved them. And actually, uh, they are pretty good. They are pretty good. I'm like sorting through them now. Uh, but how do you get to these? How do you get to this fruit? How do we, how do we eat our fruit? Well, first of all, it has to be planted. And then it has to be harvested, right? So that's what I was doing today. I was trying to harvest. Harvest some, some fruit. <laughs> and uh, I, the blueberries taste pretty good. I haven't bitten into the apples yet. I know Father Mike came by the other day and... Just picked one right off the tree and ate it and said it was good. I, I don't remember what kind of apples they were, but this kind of brings me to my other topic. And I thought I'd just kind of go outside here real quick. Uh, so we don't have the uh, sound of the refrigerator, but rather the outdoors and the birds and stuff. This is the backyard uh, of the house. And uh, you might notice it's, a, of course, it's a regular, you know, porch here, but it's also got some of uh, the uh, it's just chicken wire. So this is the Father Dave's for his cat. So we'll call this a catio. This is the catio. And what I like to do, though, is I'm going to move my phone a little bit here. I'd like to read to you um, what happened this weekend. You may have been at the um, installation on the 1115 Mass, or 1115 Mass, on Sunday, and maybe you didn't. And But... Maybe you can also watch it. Uh, we did record it. It's been published or will be published by the time you see this. But I thought I'd walk through the profession of faith. We all know the creed, so I actually did the creed again. But I'd like to read the profession of faith in what's called the Oath of Fidelity on Assuming an Office to be Exercised in the Name of the Church. People have been asking me, well, I've never heard of such a thing. And it's actually in the Code of Canon Law that someone's supposed to take this oath and uh, upon being given a, a certain position, one of them being a pastor, the other one's a deacon, actually. To become a deacon, you also have to take an oath of fidelity and also being a giving or receiving uh, a duty in the church, whether you be a deacon or, in this case for me, a pastor. So at the end of the, the, the creed that we all said at Mass, then I also stepped forward to the altar and read this. So I imagine at the end of the creed, I read this. With firm faith, I also believe everything contained in the word of God. So, you know, we could chew in all these phrases because they're just amazing. It's dramatic. And what I'd like to have to think about is how how dramatic this really is. And do we take these kind of oaths ourselves? Now, they'll be different, but in our lives as Christians, do we do these? So with firm faith, I also believe everything contained in the word of God, written or handed on, in tradition and proposed by the church, whether by way of solemn judgment or through the ordinary and universal magisterium as divinely revealed and calling for faith. Now, let me break off, uh, break out some of this. So this term magisterium means teaching. So when the Pope is teaching, we say that's the Pope's magisterium or he is uh, exercising his magisterial authority in teaching. The ordinary, well, maybe get to the, actually the, the universal uh, magisterium is something that's held by all the bishops. This is the teaching of the bishops 
uh, in concert with each other in their collegiality, their their togetherness. It's, by the way, the word college comes from the church uh, for bishops in, in, in harmony and in working with each other. And then, of course, the ordinary teaching would be more from the Pope, but also when he's speaking uh, basically the the common beliefs that we already have. There is called an extraordinary, and that's typically when a Pope will do something like ex cathedra, uh, declare something like the, um, um, the Assumption of Mary, Immaculate Conception, things like that. And those are things that are particular to a Pope. And there's a bunch of different types of um, documents that a Pope can offer. And there's names from a papal bull to an exhortation to an apostolic decree to all the way down to a modu proprio, which is the lowest is more of a, something that's uh, done on his own will. But the other ones are really not uh, uh, typically offering much of any, of any unique teaching, but a deeper sense of teaching. But it is something then that is done uh, through the Pope. But extraordinary is something out of the ordinary. And again, that would be most seen in something of the um, of a ex cathedra type statement. Also, uh, part of that is. Uh, when the church gathers together in ecumenical councils. This is out of the ordinary, and there's only been 21 of them, so that is also a part of that as well. Let me continue now. So I, I'm saying that I will accept all of these things. I will hold firm the faith in that regard. I also firmly accept and hold each and everything that is proposed definitively by the church regarding the teachings of, the, of faith and morals. So it's another reiteration. So whatever the church is teaching. So basically, uh, you can make you simplify this to everything in the catechism. Uh, that is uh, just a starting point. Uh, of course, the catechism isn't the all in all about all these things, but that is certainly something that is uh, part of the uh, firmly held teachings of the church. Moreover, I'd hear with religious submission of will. Now think about this. So when we have our faith lives and we express them, uh, we can sometimes doubt. But when we doubt, do we then look towards finding assent? Or are we looking out to prove our dissent? And I'm saying here that no, I will adhere to, real, to uh, the teachings of the church religiously. In other words, I will seek out um, that I will give over my will and intellect to the teachings of the church. Now that may seem all American, but think about it. These are the teachings of Jesus. Would we not say this about Jesus, right? Are we willing to submit our will and our intellect to the teachings of Jesus? We we hear in the end of the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus had go out and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and make disciples of all nations, teaching them, basically, what I have given. So, continue on. Moreover, I'd hear with a religious submission of will and intellect to the teachings which either the Roman Pontiff or the College of Bishops enunciate when they exercise the authentic magisterium. Now, when we say authentic, we might think uh, as true or not true, like when it's only when it's true that we will uh, submit to that. No, actually, that's more when they are um, giving over their sense of authority in magisterium teachings. Even when they proclaim those teachings by an act that is not definitive. So, uh, for example, when Archbishop Sample is teaching something, um, and he wants this to be uh, received by us priests and also taught, I submit to that and I will do just that. That's the end of the profession of faith. By the way, this catio is not initially an air-conditioned space. It's kind of toasty, so. <laughs> okay, oath of fidelity on assuming an office to be exercised in the name of the church is the next part. So I said this, this is, and I had my hand on... Uh, it could be either a Bible. In this case, we had the Book of the Gospels, since it was it was nearby. I, the Reverend William Holtzinger, on assuming the office of pastor, promise that both in my words and in my conduct, I shall always preserve communion with the Catholic Church. You know that right, oh, that right there. I almost lost my phone here. That right there is enough to make me tremble. And again, think about it. I promise by words and conduct. Am I perfect in this? I promise to be, but I'm a sinner. So I will always try to preserve. And when I fail, I need to seek out reconciliation with maybe you, maybe with my bishop, but ultimately with the church. If I err, if I do not follow this, but I promise I will. This is, think about when you're in your, your marriage, you promise to be faithful to your spouse, right? 
Well, the spouse is my case. And this analogy we often hear is the church herself. But I'm going, I promise to be in word and conduct faithful. I promise to do that, to preserve communion. So we stay together and I won't teach things that will cause us dissent uh, when it is authentic, meaning it is the authority of the church. I will promise to be, um, uh, and I'll be in one in communion. I'll be one in harmony with what is being taught. Further on, I, will, I shall carry out with the greatest care and fidelity the duties incumbent on me towards both the universal church and the particular church in which according to the provisions of the law i have made or i have been called to exercise my service so i'll carry out the greatest care and fidelity it means i'm not going to be schlepping along i am going to with the authority given to me try to proclaim with enthusiasm to also do it in a way that is compelling uh, so that we would all uh, be one in the faith um, it also mentions the universal and the particular church. The universal church is, of course, the worldwide church. The particular church is our archdiocese, not necessarily a holy trinity or any particular parish. When we say church, we're just speaking of the diocese here. In fulfilling the charge entrusted to me in the name of the church, I shall hold fast to the deposit of faith in its entirety. The deposit of faith. Again, it's all the things that already been, have been shared. All that's in the scriptures. All of the councils that have come uh, since Christ's time. Uh, all the things that the popes have enunciated in authority. And also the bishops throughout history. I shall faithfully hand it on and explain it. That's always the tough part. Because there's so much to know, right? Uh, I teach RCIA. Uh, or I have in the past. We'll see if I'm, I'll be doing it uh, here. There's so many things going on. Um... But I need to make sure that when I'm teaching, whether it be at the pulpit or whether it's in RCIA, that I do this with with faithfulness and do it well. Um, and I need to do it in its entirety. So we may have our personal peccadillos or our personal things we like, uh, but things like area of like social justice. There should be life, peace, and justice. Not just social justice and peace. It should also be life. So these are three areas that often get split up into political realms, but as a church, that's one thing. That is the Catholic social teachings, and I need to preserve all of those together. And that's a challenge. Can we do that? Can we do that? I shall follow and foster the common discipline of the whole church, and I shall observe all ecclesiastical laws, specifically, especially those that are contained in the Code of Canon Law. Uh, so even the act, the act of um, the... Installation is something that church requires, though we haven't always seen it. It happens very rarely. Um, but it is something I, when I was in Forest Grove, I was installed, and Grants Pass, and St. Anne's installed. Here again, I'm installed. Whew, it's getting toasty out here. In Christian obedience, I shall unite myself with what is declared by the bishops as authentic doctors and teachers of the faith. Remember, I spoke about authentic magisterium. It's not like we're saying whether they're good or bad. But actually, these are the teachings that will be done by their authority. Uh, authentic doctors and teachers of the faith or established by them as those responsible for the governance of the church. So sometimes the, there may be a bishop uh, that is retired and now maybe that he's moved on or he's passed away. And there may be uh, somebody in their place temporarily. That would be an example of somebody uh, that would be responsible in the place of the bishop. I shall also faithfully assist the diocesan bishop in order that the apostolic activity, what would that be? I would say that's evangelization. It is going out. The word apostle means being sent out. So I need to be sent out, not stuck at my desk. In order that the apostolic activity exercised in the name and by mandate of the church may be carried out in the communion of that same church, of the same church. You know, when I end Mass... You might notice I used commonly a phrase that's uh, part of the ending of Mass. I say, go proclaim the gospel of the Lord. That's what we're here for. Uh, I think what we've struggled with through time, and uh, myself included, is how do we proclaim the, the, the church's teaching? How do we proclaim and evangelize? That's a tough word, right? The, the big E word, evangelize. We are called, the church exists to evangelize, to share the gospel, to go out and make disciples. I promise to do that to the best of my ability. And of course, I need all of you. And that ends here. So help me, God, and God's holy gospels on which I place my hand. In closing, I just, this is amazing stuff for me. It's, uh, 
amazed I didn't crack while doing this. I stumbled in some words, but when I have done this oath, it has been very moving for me because I'm a very uh, loyal person. That's part of my um, personality traits is I'm a loyal person. I'm a kind of a company guy. Um, but I, I would do this because I find fruit in that. And I think that this oath hopefully brings fruit for all of us, that you can depend on your pastor to teach authentically and to proclaim the gospel authentically, uh, the gospels and the church's teaching, the teachings of Jesus. And when I do not, and when I do not, I need to be corrected. I need to be held accountable, uh, but hopefully uh, you'll be able to have that ability to come to me and speak with me. I will always, of course, entertain questions and comments. I've already done that. Lots of people have been coming to me and asking questions about this, that, or the other thing. And that's wonderful. And sometimes there's discussions about uh, theology. That's fine, too. Uh, but I wanted you to know that. Uh, this is profound to me. And for me, I believe this will help us bear fruit. When we are faithful to Christ and his teachings, and the teachings of his church, the bride, then we will bear fruit and the church will bear fruit. Think on these things, folks, folks. <laughs> Think on these things, folks. And um, I look forward to your comments. You can. Uh, this goes on Facebook uh, as part of the, our video feed, but also it sources YouTube. We don't have comments on YouTube, but on Facebook, feel free to put comments there and I'll try to respond. In the meantime, God bless you and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.